We're going to talk about drug addiction, so things that you can do to make sure that you become not addicted to drugs, very important. So factors that can increase addiction rates when taking drugs are understanding that sometimes you build up a tolerance and you start to need more to be able to feel good. You've heard about all this. You've heard about gateway drugs. You've heard about smoking as a gateway drug. Drugs can increase the feel-good hormone dopamine. And the more dopamine that gets released, the more you're like, oh my gosh, I like this. And then it starts to promote these feelings of if you don't have this, then you're not going to be happy anymore. Things are not going to feel good. So dopamine secretion is one reason why people become addicted to drugs. Another may be genetic predisposition. Hard to actually show if there are specific genes that make you more likely to do this, but it's probably easier just to kind of look at family histories as well too. So although we know, for example, I don't know, that cancer can be caused by different types of predispositions to genes, a you know, pretty good indicator is whether cancer of a particular type has been running in your family. But if you don't have access to that information, that's kind of tough as well too. But it doesn't mean that just because your grandpa was a drug addict, that means you're going to be one as well too. But that is one factor that could uh, affect drug addiction, genetic predisposition. And of course, social factors, culture, peer pressure, poverty, trauma, mental health problems. There's a lot of different types of social factors that can affect whether you're more or less likely to become a drug addict as well too. So you can write about this if you're asked about factors affecting drug addiction or likelihood of doing that. So obviously in terms of scientific approaches, uh, dopamine secretion, genetic predisposition, this you must understand is kind of a cross between your environment and what you expose yourselves to and also a little bit of tying into the nature versus nurture argument as well too. In previous videos, I talked about the specific mechanisms that certain types of psychoactive drugs will have on your synapses. Here's another quick little summary. It's less visual, but in previous videos, you should have been able to see how, for example, cocaine or methamphetamines and THC actually affect the synapse uh, at the synapse level. And there's diagrams there to help you understand that. So know that these psychoactive drugs are, sorry, this is vertical, mimicking the sympathetic nervous system. And remember, sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight system as well too. And so it's going to make you feel very different than how you should normally behave. And I guess that's one of the reasons why a lot of people like to use psychoactive drugs to make themselves feel different. One of the the reasons why alcohol is so popular as well too. So there's all kinds of drugs out there and there are people getting very creative with using drugs that weren't even drugs before and trying to dangerously produce their own types of things at home and try new types of stimulants and depressants. So stimulants are basically psychoactive drugs that increase the transmission at synapses in brains. So they're going to increase the rate of firing. Nicotine from cigarettes is obviously one of these. It binds to receptors and leads to to depolarization, that means firing the next action potential and then therefore increased dopamine release. Cocaine is one that acts as a stimulant as well too. This one I've illustrated in a previous video. This one blocks dopamine reuptake and causes dopamine to hang out in the synapse a little bit more and so you get continued excitation just like this cursor is moving around and becoming really large. That's the first time I knew I could do that. Sedatives are a type of drug that sound like they do the opposite of stimulants. They are going to calm you down or decrease transmission at synapses. They're going to lower your ability to respond to things. They're going to lower your reaction times, playing certain types of games, operating heavy machinery, or doing anything like driving. Obviously, um, there are no laws really against like smoking and driving, but obviously drinking alcohol and also probably taking other types of sedatives that are going to lower your response time. There are probably rules in whatever country you're in. In Japan, there are definitely rules about that. In America, I tried, I just, I, no, I never tried anything like that. So you have to be careful about things like that as well too. Diazepam is a type of sedative. It binds to a certain type of receptor called a GABA receptor, and it ends up inhibiting nerve impulses in the postsynaptic neuron. So it means it's going to prevent 
the next neuron from firing by allowing the entry of more chloride ions. And the entry of more chloride ions tends to decrease the rate of transmission as well too. Tetrahydrocannabinol, more commonly known as THC, or even more commonly known as weed or marijuana, this is the active ingredient in marijuana, binds to receptors that are called cannabinoid receptors, and they also do something similar. They inhibit the release of neurotransmitter. So instead of even doing anything at the postsynaptic neuron, you're just allowing less neurotransmitter to go through. So that means less firing, less action potentials in the postsynaptic neuron. Psychoactive drugs mimic the sympathetic nervous system kind of like a sin, sympathetic. That's how you remember sympathetic systems like sin. It signals the fight or flight system. I've said this before in other things as well too. All right, people, don't do drugs because it'll start making you hallucinate.